Welcome to the second chapter of Foundation Course in English Grammar. The second chapter deals with types of nouns. So as you can see, there are 11 types of nouns. They are common nouns, proper nouns, concrete nouns, abstract nouns, collective nouns, compound nouns, countable nouns, uncountable nouns, possessive nouns, singular nouns and plural nouns. So we will see each of these in detail. Let us uh, begin with common nouns. So what are common nouns? Common nouns are general names of people, animals, places or things. What does this mean? This means that uh, common nouns don't refer to any specific names uh, of uh, people, animal, places or things. Instead they refer to the general names. Now we will get a better understanding once we see this example. The goats grazing in the field belong to my uncle. Now in this sentence if you can say goats, field and uncle. Goats is a type of, goat is a type of animal. And goats is a collective name given to a group of animals or group of goats. So there is no specific name involved here, field. Field also, it's a general field. It's not mentioned whether it's a paddy field or mustard field or a wheat field. So there again, it's a general name. Then uncle. Uncle also, the name of uncle is not specified. So it's only uncle. It's a general name uh, based on relation. Uncle. So goats, field and uncle. What are they? They are common nouns. So some other examples of common nouns are boy, girl, city, town, country, car, dog, cat. So any such word which uh, indicates a general name given to people, animals, places or things are called as common nouns. Now let us see what do you mean by proper nouns. Now let us see what are proper nouns. Proper nouns are specific names of people, places, animal or things. So in common nouns we saw common nouns are the general names given to people, places, animals or things. Similarly in proper nouns, <coughs> uh, proper nouns are specific names of people, places or things. Okay, now consider the sentence Ashoka was a great king. In this sentence, what is Ashoka? We all know that Ashoka was a, was one of the greatest emperors of or one of the greatest kings of India. Of India, okay. So Ashoka is a specific name. So in the sentence, Ashoka is a proper noun. Ashoka was a great king. Now, what is king? From our previous uh, uh, this one topic, which was on common nouns. We can make out that king. King is a general name given to a class of people. So, king. King is a common noun. Ashoka is a proper noun. Other examples of uh, proper nouns are Rakhi, Suresh, Mumbai, India, Richard, London, February, Cleopatra, Jeremy and so on. So these are the specific names of persons, places, of course things we are not included in this uh, examples. So this is what is known as proper noun. Now let us see what is meant by concrete noun. So let us now see what are concrete nouns. A concrete noun is a noun which refers to people and things that exist physically and can be seen, touched, smelled, heard or tasted. So what are these seen, touched, smelled, heard or tasted? Seen is one of our physical senses. Touched, the sense of touch. Smelling, the sense of smell. Heard the sense of hearing and taste 
the sense of tasting. So basically, all the people and things that exist physically and can be seen, touched, smelled, or heard, or tasted, they are referred to as concrete nouns. In other words, concrete nouns are nouns describing a physical entity that can be perceived with the senses. So everything in this world that can be perceived with our senses and exist physically are called concrete nouns. For example, park, building, bridge, beach, laptop, car, pen, book, table, teacher, student, doctor, lawyer, dog, mouse, rabbit, bird and so on. So these are called concrete nouns. So now let us see what are abstract nouns. A noun that refers to ideas, qualities and condition. That is things that cannot be seen or touched and things that have no physical existence. The earlier type of noun that is concrete noun we had seen that things that have a physical existence and can be perceived with our senses, those nouns are called concrete nouns. Now in contrast to concrete nouns, abstract nouns are the nouns which refers to ideas, qualities and condition. That is things that cannot be seen or touched and things that have no physical existence. So it is quite the opposite of concrete nouns. So, when you look at the examples, you will get a better understanding. For example, goodness, kindness, hardness, youth, childhood, death, poverty, love, friendship, time. Now, these are the things which don't have any physical existence and cannot be seen or touched. So, such things and the nouns which refer to such things are called as abstract nouns. Now, an important point to remember is this note that is, the names of the arts and sciences like grammar, chemistry, physics, etc., are also abstract nouns. So, the grammar that we are learning now, grammar as a subject, that also comes under abstract nouns because it does not have physical existence and it cannot be seen or touched. So, this is what is meant by abstract nouns. Let us now see collective nouns, that is number 5. So, so far we have seen common nouns, proper nouns, concrete nouns, Abstract nouns. Now, next is collective nouns. A collective noun is the name of a collection of persons or things taken together and spoken of as one whole. That means a group or a collection of persons or things. The name given to it is called as collective noun. For example, crowd, mob. Crowd is a collection of people. Mob is also another form of crowd, team, team like uh, players for a particular sport representing a particular country or a state. So, team, team is a collective noun, flock, herd, army, fleet, jury, family, nation, parliament, committee, choir, audience, crew, pack, government. So, from this what, we, what can we infer? That is, in other words, collective nouns refer to groups of people or things. In simple words, collective nouns refers to groups of people or things. Next, we are going to see what are compound nouns. So, next we are going to learn about compound nouns. Compound nouns refer to two or more nouns combined together to form a single noun. So, the word compound itself indicates that is, it is formed out of two or more components. So, compound nouns 
refer to two or more nouns combined together to form a single noun. Now these words we might have come across in our daily usage, but we might not have thought about it as a compound noun like moonlight. Moonlight is formed from two words that is moon and light. Similarly, postman. Post and man combined together to form postman. Chess board. Chess and board. These two words combined together to form chess board. Armchair. The words arm and chair. Screwdriver. Screw driver. Teaspoon. Tablespoon. Table and spoon. Teaspoon. Tea and spoon. Windmill, wind and mill. So next we are going to see what are countable nouns. So up to compound nouns we have seen. Next we are going to see what are countable nouns. So friends, now let us see what are countable nouns. Countable nouns, as the word suggests, uh, the word nouns that can be counted. That is, countable nouns or they are also called as simply countables are the names of objects, people, etc. that can be counted. Now, countable nouns have a singular and plural form. Now, in plural form, they can be used with a number. Now, what do we mean by this? Now, we know that every noun can have singular as well as plural. When it is only one, uh, it is referred to as a singular. When more than one, and then uh, they have their plural form. So, countable nouns or countables are the names of objects, people, etc. that can be counted. This is simple to understand. The second one is also not that difficult to understand, but let me elaborate. They have a singular and plural form. That's also clear, I hope. Now, in plural, the countable nouns can be used with a number. What does that mean? That we can understand with the help of these examples. For example, these are examples of countable nouns. Apple, house, brother, doctor. That is anything, any noun that can be counted uh, are called countable nouns. Now, in singular form, apple is simply apple. One apple or apple. Apple is singular. Now, the plural of apple, it can be apples. Or if in a particular sentence, uh, if uh, the context requires uh, for us to know how many apples, then that uh, sentence can be like, uh, this bowl contains five apples. So, this is what the, what is the meaning. In plural, they can be used with a number. Five is a number. In words also, we can use or five, the number. Okay. So, this is what we mean by in plural they can be used with a number. Apple, normal, simply straight away plurals is apples. But specifically if any particular context requires how many apples. So, this bowl contains 5 apples. So, number can be used with the plural form of countable nouns. Now, similarly house, house straight away plural is houses. Okay. Now, if a number needs to be used, how many houses are there in this area? If anybody asks, then we can say there are four houses in this area. So, number can be used with the plural form of countable nouns. Brother, doctor, anything or anybody that can be counted can be called as a countable noun. I hope it's clear. Next, we will see what are uncountable nouns. So now let us see what are uncountable nouns. Uncountable nouns or uncountables are the names of things that we cannot count. Just like in countable nouns, we the definition itself means that the names of things that we can count comes under countable nouns. So, under uncountable nouns, the names of things that we cannot count come under uncountable nouns. 
they mainly denote substances and abstract things and uh, the most important thing in uncountable nouns in countable nouns we had seen that they can be in singular and plural form but uncountable nouns can only be used in singular okay now when you look at the examples you will get a better idea for example coffee coffee singular is coffee the plural there is not another form it is coffee only it will always remain coffee even if it is more than one coffee we will the word coffee does not uh, assume the plural form similarly gold honesty honesty is an abstract thing that also comes into uncountable noun air rice knowledge anger and so on so these are the examples of uncountable nouns i hope everything is clear till now so next we will be seeing what are possessive nouns so now let us see what are possessive nouns possessive nouns as the word itself indicates possessive nouns show belonging so possessive nouns are used to show belonging now how to identify possessive nouns possessive nouns contain an apostrophe or apostrophe followed by s with noun to show possession now for example suresh's bike sara's books now in these examples the bike belongs to suresh so suresh is the proper noun here uh, apostrophe s yes. apostrophe s yes is noun to show possession so suresh is the proper noun here his bike so suresh's bike books belonging to sara so sara's books sara followed by apostrophe s books now uh, there can be instances where this nouns the proper nouns by themselves will end in s for example the name james james is a proper noun ending in s charles charles is a proper noun ending in s now in these situations where the proper nouns are ending in s the possessive nouns will be indicated by simply an apostrophe followed following the last letter that is james will not become james instead it will be only james followed by apostrophe so this uh, this point you need to remember whenever uh, possessive nouns are used and the proper noun in, in the possessive noun ends in s similarly in plural in cases of plurals now plural of tiger is tigers so when uh, for example uh, we have say, uh, in a, while walking through the forest we suddenly see many footprints of tigers so tigers footprints here also the plural of tiger that is tigers ends in s so the plural the possessive noun will be footprints of or whose footprints tigers footprints tigers is a plural word ending in s so here also only an apostrophe will suffice to show the possessive noun similarly teachers teachers is a plural day belonging to teachers is what we call teachers day so here also teachers is the word teachers itself ends in s so teachers day uh, will simply require one apostrophe after the final s to indicate the belonging now one more uh, case will come across in possessive nouns that is 
in the case of compound nouns compound nouns here like brother in law commander in chief whenever possessive nouns are used along with or possessive nouns are formed from compound nouns then the apostrophe followed by s is placed after the last word in the compound noun now here brother in law brother in law which is the last word law so apostrophe followed by s is placed after the last word to show belonging there is brother in law's house so house belonging to brother in law similarly commander in chief which is the last word in this compound noun that is chief order commander in chief's order so order belonging to or issued by whom commander in chief so after the last word in the compound noun we will place an apostrophe followed by s yes to show belonging so these are certain cases of possessive nouns which we need to remember while studying english grammar now let us learn about singular nouns the word singular itself implies that it deals with single or one so singular nouns are nouns that refer to one person place animal thing or idea whatever may be the case whether it be a person place animal thing or idea a noun which refers to one of these is called a singular noun for example book dog anthem planet moon these are all singular nouns now uh, singular nouns can be modified by articles like a or an the topic of articles will be dealt with in a separate chapter for uh, right now we just we just have to keep in mind that the singular nouns are capable of being modified by articles like a or an now where what are the case, situations in which uh, or what are the singular nouns where a is used and what are the singular nouns where an is used now that depends on the sound with which those nouns are starting with for example the article a is used with nouns starting with a consonant sound consonant sound means all the sounds excluding vowels what are the vowels in english a e i o u these are vowels and these sounds are called vowel sounds okay so other than vowels all the remaining sounds are called consonant sounds so for nouns starting with a consonant sound we can always use a along with those nouns and for nouns starting with a vowel sound that is a e i o u see a e i o u these are the letters which are vowels in english now vowel sound means this will not be pronounced as a It will be the a sound e sound i sound o sound and u sound so for nouns starting with a vowel sound they are capable of being modified by the article an these are the just two points to remember for singular nouns for example rainbow rainbow what is the starting uh, sound in rainbow r that is r r is a consonant so a it will be prefixed with a it will be called a rainbow or a rainbow elephant in elephant what is the starting uh, sound that is e e is a vowel sound so elephant will always be prefixed with the article an in case of singular nouns now pen pen starting with the consonant sound p or p so a pen house starting with the consonant sound 
her represented by letter H. So it will be called A house. So these are all the things that we need to keep in mind about singular nouns. I hope it's clear to everyone. Next we will learn about plural nouns. So last but not the least, plural nouns. Plural nouns. Plural nouns are used to refer to more than one person, place, animal, thing or idea. In singular nouns we have seen, singular nouns are used to refer to one person, place, animal, thing or idea. But uh, whereas in plural nouns, plural nouns are used to refer to more than one, more than one person place, animal, thing or idea. For example, plural of bird is birds, plural of bus, buses, plural of knife, knives, plural of candy, candies, plural of tomato, tomatoes, plural of belief, beliefs, plural of phenomenon, phenomena. Now looking at this plural nouns, we can get an idea that every plural noun in this example is not formed by following the same rule. Each plural noun is formed from the singular noun by applying a different rule. That's why plural nouns in itself is having content enough for a separate chapter. So, in this chapter we are only getting a basic introduction of plural nouns. The detailed rules, there are approximately 16 rules for pluralizing nouns. These rules we will deal with in the next chapter solely dedicated to plural nouns okay so there are almost 16 rules for pluralizing nouns just keep in mind uh, for now when we go to the next chapter on plural nouns we will discuss all the rules in detail with examples so simply put plural nouns are used to refer to more than one person place animal thing or idea these are some of the examples of plural nouns. Birds, buses, knives, candies, tomatoes, beliefs, phenomena. So I hope this chapter has presented to you a clear cut understanding about the types of nouns. Thank you.